how to create a laser scan node in ROS with a DIY project. My name is Tiziano and if you're new to the channel, welcome! This is a series about ROS, the robot operating system, and in today's video we're gonna create a simple laser scanner node using a TF Mini Plus and a servo, both connected to our Raspberry Pi. If you're new to the series, check out all my previous videos where I set up a ROS on a real robotic example, I create a publisher and a subscriber node, and I also customize the message. You can find the link to the series in the description below or clicking right here. The TF Mini Plus is a single point short range lighter that derived from the TF Mini. Now the Plus version is IP65, that means that you don't need to create a protective case around it, and it has a much better accuracy. Plus has a much shorter uh, blind range that goes from the 30 centimeters of the TF Mini to less than 10 centimeters for uh, the TF Mini Plus. The idea behind today's video is rotating this LiDAR in order to get a scan all around us. Now there are better ways of doing that rather than using a servo. You can for example use a stepper motor or a motor and encoder, but servos are much easier to implement. You can have one in your drawer right now. And also we're gonna get to control the servo using only the Raspberry Pi, that I think is great. So now it's time to get started with the tutorial. The idea is very simple. We start off by setting up the servo angle to the minimum value and we read the laser. Then we rotate the servo one step and we keep repeating the process until we reach the maximum angle. Then we publish all the measured ranges with the laser scan message in the topic TF Mini Laser and we start over. The first thing we're gonna do is mounting the lighter on the servo. The scanner is composed of the TF Mini Plus laser scanner, a small 180 degrees servo, a 3D printed bracket and five 2mm cap screws. The TF Mini Plus comes with a 4-pin connector that looks like it could plug in a PixSock I2C port, but in reality this is a serial connector and if you want to use it with your drone you need to follow the instruction on the autopilot documentation, I put a link in the description below. In my project I use a PixSock I2C bus and I created an adapter for connecting the Raspberry Pi UART. Wiring all together is very simple. The servo is powered from the 5V pin and the ground of Raspberry Pi, and the command signal connected to one of the GPIO, in our case the number 22. The laser scanner is powered from the same 5V pin, while the communication pins, white and blue, connect to the Raspberry Pi UART. In the end, here is the complete schematics. Pretty simple, huh? Now it's time to read the lighter. I derived the class TF Mini inspired from the TF Mini Raspberry Pi repository that I found on GitHub. We passed the connection port and the baud rate, we set the minimum and maximum range in centimeters, then in the method getData we read the serial buffer and get the reading. I also added a property distance to return the last available distance measure, and print data thread that we're gonna use for testing. Then we create a test where we just print on screen the readings. And here you go, the laser detects my hand and prints all the measures. I verify the measurements with a ruler and they are quite accurate. In order to move the servo, we're going to use Servo Blaster. Servo Blaster is a great library that allows you to control up to 21 servos using only the Raspberry Pi. For controlling the servo with just the Raspberry Pi, we will install the Servo Blaster library. We clone the PUI bits repository and we browse in the Servo Blaster user folder. Here we make and make install and then reboot. Then we modify the configuration file in edge init.d servo blaster where we set PCM as protocol. And we can also modify which GPIO to be working as a servo. In my case, I will set only the GPIO 22 and 23 that corresponds to the pin 15 and 16. I won't be going into much details of Servo Blaster, as I will be probably covering in another video. Let's test Servo Blaster by manually commanding the servo. I created a library for handling Servo Blaster. The first class, Servo Blaster, initializes a servo object where you can pass the GPIO number and it will be remapped to the default servo number. 
in the method update you just pass the duty cycle in microseconds, like for example 1500, and the server is controlled accordingly. The other class, servo angle, is a little more complicated, but basically it allows you to control the servo in terms of angles. The object is initialized with the GPIO port and minimum and maximum angle and the corresponding duty cycles. And then I have other methods for converting the commanded angle in duty cycle or setting the servo in predefined positions. There is a property for getting the current commanded angle and the minimum and maximum angles. Finally, we write a testing procedure where we move the servo from right to left with a 2 degrees step. And now we merge those two worlds together, the LiDAR and the servo, into a single class. We're going to develop this class so you guys can use it for your own projects without ROS. We create a class called TF Mini Servo Scanner. Here we pass all the data for the laser and the servo together with the time it takes for the servo to move from minimum to maximum. We pass also the number of readings we want. It initializes the object servo angle and laser and then it calculates the step angle. It also calculates the minimum time to sleep when a step is commanded based on the servo speed. Then we have the method read laser for getting the range and reset servo for getting the minimum angle. In the method move servo, the servo position is incremented of one step until it reaches the end of travel. Then it changes direction. Finally, the scan method returns quantities that are to be used by the ROS node. Scan resets the servo, then it collects all the ranges from the laser in the angular interval and finally it returns the initial and final angles, the time and angular increment and the array of ranges. And as usual, we test the library with a simple print on screen. And finally, it's time to integrate the laser scanner with ROS. We're going to modify a publisher that we developed in the video right here. We're going to create our new topic and we're going to publish a message laser scan. The laser scan message comes with the sensor messages package. As usual, we need to create a ROS package. We browse in the Catkin workspace source folder and we create the package laser scanner TF mini with ROS PY as a dependency. We will develop all the classes to be used independently of ROS anyway. We start off by importing ROSPY, the laser scan message from the sensor messages package and the TF mini servo scanner library that we just built. Then we set up the static values like the GPIOs, the minimum maximum angle, the corresponding duty cycles, the time it takes for the servo to go from minimum and maximum and the number of samples per scan. We create a simple publisher on the topic TF mini laser, sending a message scan of type laser scan. In the header, you need to specify the frame ID that is the reference frame the scanner refers to. In our case, we're going to set map and we'll be going back to the concept of reference frames in another video. A laser scan message contains all the data of a scan sweep that are the initial and final angle, the angular and time increment between values, the time it took, the minimum and maximum range of the laser, and finally, the two arrays containing the ranges in meters and the intensity values. We initialize the object TF mini scanner, we initialize the message with the static values of the frame ID and the maximum and minimum laser ranges. Then we create an infinite while loop until ROS is not shut down, we perform a scan and we write all the information in the scan message. Finally, we publish the message. Here, we initialize the node and start the publisher. In the terminal, we make the file executable with our chmod, we compile and source the environment, and we run the node. In another terminal, we check the current topics, And then we display the TF mini laser topic. Okay, that's great, but printing the laser on the screen is really of little help. What if we visualize everything on a 3D visualization tool? 
What if you use RBIS? While our node is running, we open another terminal and we type ROS run RBIS RBIS. Here in the display tab, we add an object of type laser scan. And we select the topic we are publishing into. If you don't see anything, check that you are setting the frame ID as map, even in your scan message. We can set the points a little bit bigger and color them in terms of their intensity or range. And now we test with my hand. Here you can see that as I move my hand in front of the scanner, there is a dip in the scan corresponding to my hand position. So guys, that was really great. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button below, leave a comment, and don't forget to check out all my other videos about ROS and about drones. Big shout out for AnchorGH for contributing to my How the Drones Work repository. And if you guys have any project involving drones, you want to check out my other series about drones, you can find the link in the description below or clicking right here. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.